<laughs> I keep asking myself, is it ever going to stop the rain? It's just been the past three to four days of solid rain, and we knew it was going to be like this um, because of the forecast. I actually got it right this time, but we got the ladies walking over here. It was funny. I, sh I probably showed you a clip earlier. If not, I'll show you now. Either way, you'll see it before I tell you this, but um, the, main, the big rooster, Sue, it seems like he has his certain hens is certain ladies that follow him everywhere and then the other rooster the younger rooster the one that we hatched out has a few of his own that follow him it's pretty funny they're all together right now we'll walk over i'll sneak over here that one kind of gets scared and runs all the time um but we'll we'll go over there and i'll show you what i'm talking about like it's pretty it's pretty interesting i've never really realized this before um if you guys have chickens and uh, you've had the experience with this it's interesting isn't it let me know some comments down below what you think i think they got their preferred ladies Check this out. So there's there's that the younger one, and there's Sue. And he the I still have the name him. I like him, um, but he has always that white one's always with him. That white hen seems like is always with him. And then Sue always has the older, more mature hens. And there's it looks like we're how many we got here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We're missing a couple. Let's go see. If, look, he's always scared. He's always running always see then they're following those are the ones that are always with him and his white one they always follow him and then sue has all right that one has that one and then these ones are always with sue is that not interesting and then we just got abe and mary here what's going on abe and mary look how red abe is today they finally came out after the rain they actually out in the middle of the rain okay Sue, we hear you hey so we're not doing a whole lot today i want to get out here and film a little bit um while i could while the rain stopped and uh, do a little family vlog. We might go in the house and do some stuff. Um, I need to check on the animals first, but I think there might be some hens in here. Let me look. We usually, I think we have 13. Let me see. Yeah, there's one laying. I don't know if you can see there's one in there. There might be a couple in there. Every time I see a bunch of buzzards flying around, I get a little nervous. There's one in there. We got a few eggs. I need to go get some more bedding for them. Hello. Hello. But yeah, anyways, anytime I see um, buzzards flying around, I get a little nervous because I think, oh, I got a dead chicken out there. Well, we haven't lost any in a while. Cross your fingers. Um, but let me go check on the ghosts. Looks like they are down to their last little nibble of hay. And I'm going to go out there and we'll go ahead and give them a new hay bell. And uh, yeah, they're all over there. It's just, it's just been raining nonstop. They haven't been able to get to do a whole lot. Gabby and Grace, I'm telling you, these collars that we got Gabby and Grace on, the longer we have them, the more thankful I am for technology because it has just been awesome uh, for them. I mean, for them, not just for us, but for them. Gabby, crazy. So we'll walk out here. Actually, let's get the goats. Let's get the goats some grain. They're still not eating that big old brand new bucket of mineral that I bought them crazy it's starting to rain on me again might yeah it's coming down now uh-oh that's Hallie's favorite hat what's it doing out here how do you get wet it's pouring down I got out here to the ghost and it just started pouring down rain now I don't want to get my camera soaked but I got an idea I'm going to try to get over to the other pen. I want this. Alright. So here's my idea. Pour it in here. Maybe that will help them eat some of that. Y'all been looking at that. Maybe that will help promote it. I don't know. We'll see. We got to get back in the house. Okay, I'm on the back porch. You can see, you can probably hear the rain behind me. It started pouring down rain. I'm out there at the goat pen. Uh, like I said today, I don't have, we don't have a busy day today. It's kind of a relaxed, chill day. I'm probably going to take um, Brandy and the girls out to dinner here in a little bit. But I wanted to get a video out for you. It's Sunday, it's Sunday afternoon, and I want to talk to you about something that, this probably won't be a long video either, so sorry about that. I know a lot of you guys like the longer videos because it takes up some of your time and you guys, whatever, you, you know what it is. But anyways, it's good, probably going to be a short video. Um, but I wanted to bring attention to something that's been going on for the, I think over a month now. Um, I, I had to look at the exact date. Well, maybe not a month. Let me see here. Yeah, I think it's been close to a month. Um, but if you guys may not have known, 
um, there's uh, there's people being arrested in Canada for preaching the gospel to a church, to a live church. And that and I'm gonna I'm gonna link a article, a YouTube channel um, video up right there. Um, you guys click on that. And you can see you can see the whole thing I'm talking about. It's actually James's wife talking uh, has an interview with um, with a another uh, with a YouTube channel. And this is a couple weeks ago. Um, some things have went on after, since then. So there might be an update on there. I don't know. I need to look myself. Um, I do have an update. I know he's still in jail. Um, but at the time of that video, they're waiting on appeals um, to get him out of jail and, and then all this stuff. But um, it, it's just a crazy thing that I think a lot of you guys may not be aware of because um, it's just not talked about in the news especially here in the states because it's such a touchy subject uh, and um, when, it come, when it comes to christianity um christ says that they first if let me read let me read a verse to you so let me read, let me read this to you and this is a direct reflect of this verse of what jesus said um, this is john 15 18 um, it's called the hatred of the world um, if the world hates you, know that it has hated me before it hated you. This is Jesus speaking. If you were of the world, the world would love you as its own. But because you are not of the world, but I chose you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. He's talking about Christians there. Um, remember the word that I said to you, a servant is no greater than his master. If they persecute me, which is Jesus, they will also persecute you. So and this is direct effect. And, and I've, I've had personal attacks of my Christianity um, and my family. And I always go back to this verse, and, and I don't I don't hate the people by any means that have attacked me and my family for our faith. Um, but you may not believe this, or you may believe it, but I've actually prayed for these people, and um, and not not only for um, not I'm trying to word this without I'm trying to say I pray for their salvation. I prayed that God would open their eyes to the truth and their salvation. Um, that you don't go around and. <laughs> It's not, I mean, it's not funny. Millions of people have died in the name of Christianity over the years, probably hundreds of millions um, over the last 2,000 years. Um, here, here in America, um, we don't get persecuted, you might say. Uh, if, uh, I don't know, it's kind of hard to say. It's kind of hard, kind of hard to word this, but uh, persecution is like what James is going through um, in Canada. Persecution is like over in China, that they're having underground churches to hide from the government because they want to read um, a, a, a page out of the Bible that they found. I mean, I've seen some videos that they cling to one page that they come across of God's word and that one page of, of the gospel has saved them and now they, they're just hungry for the word. So they, they're, they have these underground um, churches and stuff in China and Iraq, um, the Philippines, uh, not as much the Philippines as it is uh, Vietnam. <coughs> Vietnam is, I've actually visited some of those underground churches that they have them in apartments. Um, they got to put the whole uh, the whole room, soundproof the whole room. Uh, it's like a big secret to go into these, I mean, it's crazy. So persecution, um, it, I think it is coming more to America, not as a government, as a government um, persecuting the Christians, not necessarily um, individuals persecuting Christians, that makes sense. Like whenever we get attacked for our Christianity, and it's not all the time, um, but it happens. It happens, and I think some of you guys may, you you may have seen some of that before. Um, and it's one of the things you just you just shake your head and like and just I feel sorry. I feel sorry for um, the people who don't see that. Um, we're just trying to live our life, raise our kids the best that we can, and, and follow God's word. We're not perfect by any means. We sin. I sin daily. Um, it's just one of the things you you turn away from those sins. You, you repent from it. You have to have the conviction to do that, and I'm convicted all the time. Um, it's just part of Christians aren't perfect. Um, but anyways, enough about my little, enough about me, but I want to talk about James Coates. I want you guys to go watch that video, because um, like I said, I know a lot of you guys are not aware of this. So I'll give you a quick rundown, and then you, this won't be a quick video. You can go jump on that if, you, if you're interested in that. Um, but James was arrested several weeks ago, a month ago, um, for preaching to his flock, to his congregation um, at his church. Um, the, the government there in Canada, has set some guidelines up. They've been in place for probably close to a year now, like here in America, um, that they weren't able to assemble. They weren't able to have their church service. Well, after several months of them um, obeying the law there and not having the church um, uh, congregate in large groups or groups at all in person, they were doing it all online. If you don't go to church, then you may not understand this, but if you're a Christian that does go to church 
uh, and, and you're in the faith and you, you'll understand this and those who don't maybe this will bring some light to it um, as a Christian you have to be around fellow believers you have to congregate with them you have to fellowship with them you need them to uplift you and not just that you need the accountability of your brothers and sister holding you accountable so if they see you sinning or you see them sinning and doing things that they're not supposed to be doing then you can go talk to them and, and counsel them and, and then bring them back in and uh, trust me it happens all the time it's a uh, the accountability of a church membership is a big deal. A lot of churches don't do church membership just because of that. People don't like accountability. They don't like being told what they're doing wrong. And I think that might be a part of why a lot of people don't go to go to church. They don't want to hear about their sin. We all know we're sin, sinful anyways. Even Abe back there, I got now. But um, anyways, James James Coates, he, uh, after several months of them um, doing what they were told, they finally, you know, we're going to have a church. We're going to have um, church service. Um, so they opened up the church. They had a service. I think they had one or two services. You have to watch the interview. And um, they got a letter from the city. You know, if you have another one, you could be subject to fines. And I don't know if they end up getting fined, but, or you could be subject to being arrested. Well, long story short, so you guys can go watch the whole interview of his wife actually telling this. They actually arrested James Coates for holding a service over their 15% maximum capacity um, as far as, so if you had 100 uh, people that usually come to church, you have 15, 15 people now, you got 15% of that. And they, they said, you can have as many as you want. So basically what they're saying is, he need to have seven or eight different, <coughs> seven or eight different services uh, if he wanted to uh, uh, shepherd his whole flock um, in, in uh, person. Well, James decided, you know, we're not doing that. We're going to, we're going to have our church service. They end up arresting him. Um, they went through an appeals process to try to get him released so that he can be with his family. He has kids and wife and, and uh, just like all of us, we have a family that we have to attend to. And, um, they, and they said, you know what, we're going to let you out. But all you have to do is sign this piece of paper saying that you will not hold your church service again. And he refused to do it. So he's still, he's still in jail for that. And um, hopefully a, a court date's coming up soon um, to see what's going to happen to him. And uh, that's just one. Uh, I don't know if there's been any more. I know we actually have affiliate churches there, a affiliate church there that we actually, um, that we help, we um, help with up there that um, they did the same thing, but they haven't known, known when there's been arrested yet. I think, I don't know if they've been fined yet or not, um, but James is actually in jail right now. And um, we have a lot of uh, people from church that are writing him letters and stuff like that. Um, but I, I felt the need. I wanted to bring this to y'all's attention. I have, I have a lot of people in Canada um, that watch the channel that you may not be aware of this. And if you are, maybe you live in Edmonton. You can go you can go uh, see him maybe. I don't know. Go talk to him. Um, I don't know. Uh, but this is something that's been on my heart for, for several weeks now to bring attention to my audience here. Um, cause we don't, we don't get, um, I don't preach to you guys all the time and stuff like that, but I just felt the need that I wanted to share this. And if there's anyone out there that can help him, um, he's in Edmonton jail, probably at the County where they call it there. And, um, actually I got the name of it right here. He's in taken into custody at the Edmonton, uh, Remens center where he remains today because he refuses, he refused to sign a bail condition which would have him force him not to attend or hold church services as normal. So that's why he's arrested. So if you guys, if you guys, that's something, if you guys are praying, praying people, please pray for James and his family. Um, I do continuously, um, if not daily, like all the time. All right, that's all I got for you guys today. Just a quick video. I wanted to bring that to your attention because I know a lot of you guys had no idea that was going on. And uh, just be praying for James and his family. Be praying for my family. And uh, hope you guys all have a great rest of the day spending time with your loved ones. We'll catch you guys on the next video. Thanks for watching.